Hi, this is Kim Watson. In this video, I want to introduce you to Elliott Waves and how you may use them. So it's it's a bit of an introductory uh, introduction to Elliott Waves. It does not have the, the deep and um, more um, advanced methods of using them and what you might do with them as you progress, but it will give you a good introduction. And for some people, even if you've covered Elliott Waves before, you'll find it potentially useful in terms of the extra little things that I found out in the time that I've been trading. Now, this gives you a little bit of background. It was Ralph Elliott that identified that the markets move in waves, and he noticed these impulse waves, which were in turn five waves, and a corrective wave, which was a three wave pattern. So he's discovered these patterns. Now, they're quite natural in many things that we look at. You can look at the sea and you'll see different waves and you'll see surfers picking out those great waves. There's no real difference in a sense in terms of the, the, the markets work in these uh, harmonic waves, if you like. Now, of course, when I'm talking about this, there, there's, a, there's a large chunk of theory on how it works. Reality of actually using it can be quite different um, and it can take some time to get used to identifying the waves. So you, you do have to do a bit of homework if you really want to use it. Now, the market is not efficient. It's controlled by the whims of the masses and it's manipulated by many of the big players. So it's, it's, it's not an easy market always to identify waves within or what's actually happening. The masses will often overreact driving prices too high or too low. This is where we get these overbought or oversold conditions. Um, now, that, that may also be driven to a degree by the big players who want to dump, um, uh, sell into uh, strength, get rid of their positions, or, or in fact buy lower so that they can themselves drive the prices. Now, we should take this sort of overreach, as I refer to it, in terms of these overbought periods and oversold periods into account when using Elliott Waves in, in terms of accuracy. A lot of people expect them to be a real accurate tool. And if anyone tells you they're accurate, um, it's nonsense. I'll leave it there. But what they can do, they can help you understand the possible natural waves that occur as a result of the imbalance between buyers and sellers. Uh, generally, if the market's being really bought, you, you'll see price push up as there's an imbalance. There's not enough set of people selling. So to get the market to move up, you need um, higher prices. So you'll get that push upwards on the market and vice versa. They will pr provide you with potential uh, targets for entries and exits in terms of they may give you some ideas of how to get into trades. And they may just back up some of the things you're already trading in terms of some of the patterns that you look for, the natural patterns you look in the market, look for in the markets. And they can com be combined with sort of current strategies very simply. I tend to do that more with them than actually try and just sit there and work out what, what they're really doing. What they won't do is predict the future accurately. Um, there's, there's always, a, as I say, this, this drive by, this, this extra push. I say always, but it's often a, a bit of an extra push one way or the other. The other. So the, 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 the not, you're not always going to get pure accuracy with it. And looking for nailing tops and bottoms. You might be lucky sometimes, uh, but it, it, they're, they're not, it's not really a timing tool. And to be fair, um, they, they, they're often, well, they're, they're most identifier, identifiable when they've already happened. So it's one of these things where you've really got to get your eye in and we can, we can look at markets and you can look at markets on a daily basis and see, well, is that doing this or that? And then you start getting a question well, what may be looking like a bear flag uh, may, may be actually the beginning of a bullish movement. So um, they're, they're, as I say, it's, it, they're, they t you, it takes some work. Now, what you uh, must do is really use them only to enhance your trading and get the feel for the markets. And it's, it's really where you're looking for that big picture trend. Are we in a market which is changing direction um, or is it still heading in either upwards or downwards? It, it may just give you a sort of a picture to identify those early changes. Um, what you must do is keep keep focused on what the trends and support and resistance levels are like. They should always I always put them in re reviewing first because the market 
we, if you've got a horizontal resistance point, there's a good chance that the price would come up to that horizontal resistance point before before it breaks. It may take a, a couple of occasion, a couple of attempts or more to break that horizontal point. So if you're expecting it to push up a lot further, you, it might just give you some patience. But watch out for those and expect them to expect price to stay there. If you can expect things, it'll it helps you cope with it mentally. Now, um, if you look at the markets that you're trading, currencies have a different bias in terms of stocks. Stocks can have these sort of like super cycles. They can, like a particular stock may push up and up and up, whereas currencies tend to be more cyclical. We, we, see, we see as as countries run through their different phases in the economic cycles and in, in interest rates uh, rise and fall, you get these cycles in the markets, different things happen. We get things like Brexit and um, in the US, the uh, elections, um, uh, they, they can all move the markets and create uncertainty or certainty. And we'll see an effect on, on the on the charts. So be, be wary. Now let's have a look at the waves themselves. A, first, let's look at the impulse waves. Now, they, these are built up of five waves. The first wave, it, it's, it's often less obvious. And this is why it's, um, I said you sort of uh, just going to draw here. Um, leading into this first wave, you could have been, I'm drawing a bullish impulse wave here, leading into this, it's probably been driving down quite strongly. As as this wave is forming, it, the market may still be um, largely, and a lot of the news that you're seeing may be still negative. However, some of the bigger money that might already be trying to come into the market, they may see reasons for value, and particularly in stocks, the, the stocks being seen as oversold, they might come in a bit earlier. And currencies, certainly, you, you, you'll get the movement before, often before the actual price action uh, follows suit, or the, what the bigger price action might become follow suit. So here you've got this sort of move down and effectively, as I said, you've got the effectively this is a bear flag which, which is appearing, particularly when the second wave comes into play, uh, which I'm going to just draw on quickly here. So when the second wave comes onto in, into play, well, that looks like that that flag is actually working. So it, it often catches people the first wave. Let's clear that up. Here we go. And push up so that that's often cap captures what we normally see on this first wave or you you can see if you can watch volumes in any way shape or form on currencies you can obviously see it easily on stocks and indices but and commodities um, you, if you can see the volume starting to rise as the price it's a good sign of, of strength coming into the market next the next phase of this is this this sort of retracement? This is the, the the point, and particularly on the second wave, can be a point of disbelief. Now, um, often these uh, sort of second waves, uh, in a lot of the theory suggests are about 50% retrace, but we see time and time again that the second wave pulls back quite deeply, particularly when you've been in a strong uh, downward move. You think of it logically, the markets don't really want to give up this sort of uh, downside. The bears are still in, thinking they're in control, and they are in control at that stage as it's running down there. However, um, what we might be seeing is the volumes, whilst this is happening, dropping off. Uh, it can be quite deep, but it cannot, wave two cannot go lower than the beginning of wave one. So it cannot drop lower, and vice versa, if we were looking the other way up. So it cannot drop down. Wave three, now this is really where um, people have acknowledged OK. And particularly uh, when you get a break of the uh, top of the wave one there when that breaks higher than that. that that's a good sign in terms of and what I'm looking for often is a break of that uh, high there. It gives us a higher low if we talk about price in general terms. So it's given us a higher low. And OK, it's at, at that stage, if the, if, the, if the volumes are starting to pick up, we can see this quite big and strong wave uh, as more, particularly as more more traders come into this market set, so pushes it, the volumes push up as it's running up there. We then move into uh, the wave four. Um, now, this can be a bit bit of a messy one at times because it's you've got into this impulse, this push, 
and there's sort of disbelief that it's going to roll over and yet it's it's sort of teasing uh, and it can be teasing and it can roll over and you may have got the reading wrong and you, you've got a just a a, 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 a three wave correction and that's it, which we'll come on to in a moment the ABC uh, correction and that's maybe all you've got in your move and it could be rolling over here so four should be watched carefully it should not go lower than the high of the first wave there so it shouldn't go lower so it gives you an idea of where you, if you're trading the third wave, where you can move your stops up to at certain points if, if it's far enough. Because if it's starting breaking here, well, as I said, then it's maybe that fourth wave isn't the fourth wave. It's a continuation of the original bigger trend that was coming down, if there was a bigger trend. The fifth wave comes in. Now, on commodities, this is the biggest wave often. Um, not always, um, but it often is a bigger wave than the third wave. And this is where... Um, people get a little bit carried away you run into these overbought signal uh, mass um, it's it's some traders will trade the fifth wave uh, they'll wait for the fifth wave to be trading they'll see it as the safest way again you can look at this you've got you've got some targets it will uh, i mean i've drawn this quite simply the fourth wave might might or the correction from the fourth wave may have been uh, quite a bit deeper so you've got at least the previous highs um, as the initial target and you, you know in theory it should be breaking the high of that so you, that would be let me just draw on here this gives you a better understanding of what I'm trying to say so if it's deeper down here but not breaking this level uh, if it's deeper and then starts pushing up and you can see the pattern that you're looking for here you know where well, you've got to exceed this point um, in theory, so it's going to. So in terms of target-wise, you know where you're going to be. You know it, it shouldn't be running below this area, so you can be putting yeah, it stops if it's running below that area. Um, so it, it's it's probably over, and as I said, it's more likely a corrective wave as opposed to an impulse wave. So there we are. We have the five waves. Um, the fifth wave, uh, as it comes up and it pushes towards its ending. Uh, you can see divergence in the market. You may be seeing a divergence between the top of the uh, third wave and the fifth wave. There may be a divergence coming in there. Volumes may be dropping. There may be the the, the, the signs that you, you would expect where something's topping over. Now, the, these can be either uh, on the upside of a market or to the downside of the market. So you can fl flip it over the other way or you can look at it this way with, you know, on the upside so it can be depending on the big cycle that the market's in as i said on uh, in, particularly on forex you might see it, it quite sort of controlled in terms of five wave move three wave move uh, then possibly another three wave move but then a, a, a five wave the opposite, opposite direction in the cycle there, there is this sort of confusion that hits the markets when you you run from one bigger trend into uh, uh, it's really reached the top then and it's moving over now the corrective waves um, the first wave there then is it, I'm looking from from a market that's been pushing up um, th this is the, the area of disbelief in a sense uh, for, for traders in their theory in terms of they don't that well or, or, or they're really confident at this point that the market is going to be pushing up further things may still look good analysts look good okay um, as we would be pushing up towards the top you'll get a lot of the retail traders going the opposite way and that in itself can see the market push up even higher on that fifth wave um, before it pushes through and, and it the, the the important thing here with the a wave um, on the correction red well sorry I say the important the important thing with the B wave here is it can't exceed the top of it shouldn't exceed the top of the a wave so um, it, it, it and I say it shouldn't if it does it may be part of the the final kickings of a, of, a, of the fifth wave this is then followed by the C wave the, again it's generally the larger is quite the bigger. Um, if the impulse waves have been particularly big, it might just be a little bit lighter, um, but it shouldn't be. That it should always be seen as um, the largest or second largest. It, it will not be the shortest of waves. 
again this corrective action can be correcting from a, a, a big impulse upwards the correction to the downside or vice versa so you'll see either one of the markets and this is this is what the basic pattern will look like and you'll see these drawings in uh, different forms in the markets i've just literally loose drawn this so it's it's just a shape i've drawn it in it can, the, the, a lot of these moves can be deeper they can be longer in time but they should be it should look relatively clean if it doesn't look particularly clean as my general advice is is to walk away and leave it or ask we're here to ask. Now, each of these waves has a set of subwaves. Um, so, a, a wave up to the, a, a wave one may have five waves in it. A wave two may have three, uh, three waves in it. A wave three again will have most likely and mostly have five smaller waves in it. A wave four again three, sometimes five um, waves coming back here and then three three to five on that final shove there but uh, ge generally the one three and fives these impulse waves are t stronger than the, the twos and fours and it, the fifth wave is is the questionable wave because it's right the, the market's running out of zip but all the same as i say you've got waves within waves so you've got these cycles these are sort of a grand super cycle uh, which could be running into centuries um, that you've got the super cycle itself, which is, is more into decades. Um, so you're looking at decades. Um, you've got the cycle, a simple cycle, um, that's really running into several years. You've got the um, primary levels, weeks and months. And as you've run through these, you're, you're coming down to the intermediate which uh, is, is really into weeks itself, minors, uh, you, you're looking through to um, week, well, days, weeks. Um, certainly my, my new is, um, is the, uh, the daily basis, looking at dailies, and it's sort of just coming, there's a bit of overlap on these from what I picked up um, in my years of using them. You've got hours, you can run down into hourlies. My new is probably sits here somewhere between a daily and a four hourly. The minute is really coming down to the hour, multiple hours, and then you're coming down to minutes. So you've got these really tiny waves. They're just not worth playing with because uh, it's funny, we were talking about it recently in our day trading room and you, know, you go down to a five minute chart and start looking for the waves you'll see some of the waves really clearly but you can lose a lot of money trying to play with the small waves you're better off looking at the bigger time frames running into um, the dailies and maybe the four hour hour periods uh, but you don't really want to be down to the hours and the minutes or the single hours and the minutes. You want to be up there a little bit more in this zone where we can uh, do more about them. So it's that, that sort of cross between day trading, swing trading, maybe even position trading. So this cycle, um, as, as they develop then, so these time cycles can be part of a bigger cycle. That's the important thing here. So you've got your, your five waves in your your um, impulse wave you've got your corrective wave maybe coming through is only a wave two uh, and so on so you've got your third wave pushing up there five again another five wave move how we identify them is really if you just look at the price action the basic price action and you can identify them in, the, in terms of the move the higher lows so if you're looking through a market just looking at the higher lows and the higher highs and we, I'll refer to this when I'm doing my analysis of the markets. I'm looking for higher lows, higher highs uh, on a bullish market and lower highs and lower lows on a bearish market. And they are effectively the waves in the market. You can then maybe come down the time frame and see the movement within that. So if this is a, a four hourly chart, you come down to an hourly chart and you might see the waves a little bit clearer within those periods. So... Um, one thing I put here, you, 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 often you get these channels or something similar to a channel. Certainly, you should be able to draw a trend line. When the fifth wave is finished, um, then you're sort of working to see if it's going to have a bit more of a retrace. Now, um, 
as I said, with waves one to five, I tend to count the bottoms or the tops as normal wave formation. You get three bottoms uh, on an on a, on a impulse wave, effectively, uh, two of which are higher lows. That's a, that's a general pattern. If you get a whole series of higher lows, well, you may be in more than one wave. You're in a series of waves. You may be counting the third wave and the uh, fifth wave or the first wave, second wave, uh, first, third and fifth all together. They, they, it will appear as multiple, uh, can appear as multiple levels. Um, the, 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 I've, I've sort of pointed out this sort of, there we go, there's the sort of three lows that you would get, or three lows which become higher lows, two of them become higher lows as we run through here. But there are times on a fifth wave where it's moving so much, you, you could get sort of the corrections as it pulls back and then pushes up. So you get that extra look, looking bottom in the whole move. So just be aware of that. Looking at the corrective waves, um, the corrective trend as, you, as, as, as it's referred to, um, here's some patterns that I've just sort of, uh, pinch this and popped it in and it's it's really just patterns that you tend to get and what you'll notice is you get these irregular patterns and this is where it falls some people thinking the market's changing direction a bit earlier um, they're thinking well that if, you, if this was a downward move they're thinking well um, or a correction like a, a, a second wave and an impulse they're pushing up they're getting a bit early um, and then it comes off, it frightens them out there. But you get these irregular waves. Really, I mean, on a, on a real driving market, it, it, it might be very, very simple in terms of what happens. But what we see a lot of, and you can see the, the technical patterns here, the triangle, um, these double, double threes, as they refer to, and triple threes. It's where you get these lots of highs and lows, and it's just running in a channel. And so when you were seeing these channels form in the markets, well, they, they, they could potentially be part of a, a corrective pattern in a uh, in, in an Elliott wave pattern. So um, the basic patterns, um, as I say, come through here. In the basic patterns, you get patterns themselves. Uh, and I'm gonna keep this very simple. And when you're trading them, you, you, you could be looking at this sort of move here. Um, and, and, and effectively, this move here is a bit of a head and shoulders and you're sort of seeing this head and shoulders coming through. So it's a, it's, it's a very, simple identify I, I dare not talk about them sometimes but you can then measure the high to the to the neckline apply the that that to the high to the downside and start getting some potential targets of how it moves you'll get e at least equal throws um, often you get higher levels one six one eights and things like this so you can get much bigger um Put that on there be good there we go 1.618 etc you get a, a, a bigger move bigger correction uh, but the, you can see the sort of patterns they form the the most obvious pattern of course and i said, I said this at the beginning if you when you look at this it's a flag it's a little ball flag so you could be looking again extrapolate look at the the size of the flags pop it on the bottom there and you can extrapolate to where it might go now you, you, one thing you know is um, as it, once you're in it, is that it's not going to be the smallest wave, um, so it's going to be at least bigger than two, but more, most likely bigger than one, so you can, or at least equal to. So you can give, again extrapolate, or size that, and apply it, and look for targets in terms of where it might go. Um, so all the time you're looking through um, other patterns in terms of you. Know, mentioned head and shoulders uh, cup and handle patterns where it sort of price comes down um, if I do the rest of this market here so that's it I made it look like a V bottom but you've got this this price action here so you've got really and it come, might have a curved bottom as, as it comes around there and there's your cup and handle pattern and again you can extrapolate and look at the lows there and I pop them across the top there and it gives you targets so there's many different ways there's other patterns such as Gartley patterns which can be uh, shaping up where basically a Gart Gartley pattern pulls back one two like this and then pushes up and then rolls over it doesn't exceed the high I should just draw that a little bit higher it doesn't exceed the high here now this is probably this here <laughs> That's the Gartley pattern. So you've got your wave down. Now your wave down could be five little waves sitting in there. 
yeah, it could be three waves down there, but it could be most likely be five waves, a bigger bigger move. Um, depends on how quick the market's reacting. And then you get this sort of three wave push uh, in here and it's a Gartley pattern and then it fails at a retrace of relative to that. I think I'll put an X there, X, A, B, A, B, C, D. <laughs> it fails on the bottom there. So there's other patterns. Um, butterflies come in, they, well, butterflies are more likely to be this side of the market because on a butterfly, you've got the similar pat pattern, but the, the high goes, the move goes higher. So that could be some, somewhere between a four and a five. Uh, so you, you've got this retracement here. It's coming back into the retracement, pulls down, carries on for a little bit more of a retracement to the downside. But it, it, the market's still quite strong and it pushes through and gives us the, the, end of, or the, the end of the overall move that actually becomes the fifth wave. And uh, again, that's a, a butterfly, um, is, which is referred to in the markets. I'm getting technical here, but they're the basic patterns that are sitting through on a, a, a real basic pattern. Let's clear that off. So I've listed some of these head and shoulders, cups and handles, gartleys, butterflies. So there you go. OK, some takeaways from you. Uh, just bear in mind, it's not totally accurate. You'll get overruns. Uh, you'll get push, pushed beyond where you think if you're using Fibonacci with it, um, which I'll be talking about in a second. But if, you, if you're looking at anything like that, um, you can get price action. You can be wrong. Um, it takes an eye to get into it and, and use it a lot. It should be seen as a guide. Um, they are, in effect, just another way of reading price action, but a good way of understanding the price action in terms of you see in, and, and, and getting the brain used to the way the market moves. You get the impulse waves, the stronger waves, and then you get these corrective waves. And when you see a corrective wave, and if you're in a, in a more of a swing position, you can accept, depending on the time frame you are, well, that's just literally a corrective wave. I can expect that. And it, it, there's, there's a reasonable chance that this is the third wave. It's going to carry on and do the fourth and fifth. So maybe the fourth wave that's running out and you're trading the fifth wave. But it helps you work your uh, psychology out of trading a little. Um, I've added an extra little bit on here. The third wave, um, or the uh, number three or C, are normally the biggest. So that gives us an opportunity to be looking at these. And I uh, put wave five also so exceeds the high of level three. So if it's retraced after level three by a way, well, we know that that, that top of um, the wave is, is, is a target at least to be broken. So it, you know, it helps us identify targets. Um, now you can add, as I'm already alluded to, you can add Fibonacci for a little bit more confluence. So there you are. It's sorry, this is quite. It's run into nearly 30 minutes, but it's a really big subject. I could spend a day teaching it and looking at all the uh, different parts, uh, putting Fibonacci in there and giving you percentages. And maybe I'll do another video and just add some some more detail at a later stage. Now, if you like this video, please put a thumbs up, like it. If you've got questions, fire the questions away and I'll reply to them. And that is it. That is the introduction to Fibonacci and how to use them. Did I say Fibonacci? I actually meant that is the introduction to um, Elliott Waves and how to use it. It's nothing at all to do with Fibonacci or not much. There we go.